<clears throat> All right, so here we are wrapping up the last of the protostome groups I want to discuss. Uh, as you guys obviously saw, protostomes are a very large and diverse group of animals on Earth. You could spend an entire semester just going through small subsections of it. So we're just kind of hitting the highlights tour. As you move on as a biology major, take the opportunity to do a upper level course in just a specific group that you might be interested in. So lots of amazing diversity out there. These groups of animals span the entire spectrum of areas of biology that you'll be studying, whether you're going to medical school, you're going to pharmacy, you're going into conservation. You need to be familiar with all the diversity of life out there because it all connects together. Okay, so let's get into the last group. And this is just a highlights tour. I could spend an entire semester on just the arthropods. Uh, arthropods are considered the most successful group of animals on Earth. There is over, let me put some just general facts in here. We have over 1 million species that have been identified. And that's just scratching the surface. Uh, hit the hyperlink here. This was an interesting experience for us back in 2012 when I took students to Belize. We actually discovered a species of grasshopper that had not been documented in Belize before. Identified by science. It wasn't new to science, but it had not been documented by scientific community in Belize. So huge opportunity. You want to discover new species? Look at the arthropods and look at developing countries. A lot of research has not occurred in those countries at this point. Um, arthropods span every habitat on Earth, from the Arctic to the tropics. We're going to find members of arthropods, the arthropoda. Uh, <clears throat> Size-wise, 80 micrometers, you know, tiny little dust mites that live on your forehead, that live in your house, all the way up to three meters, this Japanese spider crab. I mean, they're huge, huge animals for animals that don't have backbones that are in this protostome group. Uh, significant economic importance to the arthropods. Honeybees alone, it's estimated that honeybees alone pollinate $10 billion worth of food in the United States every year. So I want to pose a challenge to you guys. Find a food in your house, a food product in your house that is connected to honeybees. What food products are pollinated by honeybees? And you may say, oh, okay, well, I got this and this and this. Well, my hamburger wasn't pollinated by a honeybee, but what did the animal eat? What did the cow eat? What did the deer eat? The rabbit eat? Are they eating plants that were pollinated by honeybees? So massive economic importance in a positive way. Unfortunately, we can see some negatives when we talk about crop damage and disease, etc. But arthropods, incredibly important group to understand and have a better knowledge of. So arthropods evolve. Let me move some of this around here. Arthropods first evolved on Earth. Let me get a new box. Um, Oh, ah, okay, arthropods evolved, earliest evolution of arthropods around 500 to 250 million years ago. The earliest, earliest ones were these things called trilobites, these little weird shaped creatures that we're looking at here with the pictures. So trilobites, oh, I got a typo, sorry, trilobites. Um, are the earliest arthropods. They had a flattened body, they had the head, the thorax, and then the abdomen. Um, let me get the pen out. Let me get some color. Okay, so when we look at arthropods, here's the head, here's the thorax region, and then all of this is part of the abdominal region. So what's actually happened with trilobites, their head and thorax kind of fused together 
into the thing known as the cephalothorax. All right, anyway, earliest arthropods. They went extinct around 250 million years ago. But what we see from this ancestral group, other groups of arthropods evolve, diversify, branch off. Terrestrial arthropods show up around, oh, let's go around, around 360 million years ago. It's when we see the earliest terrestrial arthropods, and they're evolving from the trilobites, which, my apologies, trilobites are a completely aquatic group, aquatic species of uh, arthropods. And what triggered this evolution were changes in, you guys remember this? Hox genes. So changes in the Hox genes, little tweaks, little mutations, little changes, are what led to the arthropod evolution to give us that body plan. And again, our earliest terrestrial arthropods about 360 million years ago. So, okay, so what I want to do is talk about the key features of an arthropod, what puts something into that phylum arthropoda, should have put that up there earlier, I'm sorry, phylum arthropoda key features. Currently, we have four living classes of arthropods, and we'll just very, very broad, brief, basic highlight tour of those guys. But to be an arthropod, key features. All right, first key feature that puts you into, let me change this, arthropoda change font size <clears throat> all right so key things that say okay this is what you need to get put into phylum arthropoda let's start with the number one feature you have an exoskeleton i'm going to decrease font size here a bit all right so you have an exoskeleton an external shell the shell is made up of chitin, so polysaccharide. And who can tell me what other group uses chitin within their structural makeup? Now, if you're sitting there thinking, look it up. It's going to be an important question to be able to answer. What other group have we discussed this semester that also uses chitin as part of the structural makeup? So what this exoskeleton does is it provides a layer of protection and decrease water loss. So it's a huge advantage when you're evolving to terrestrial existence. Another big feature, arthropod body plan, they're segmented, so they exist or exhibit segmentation of the body plan. We can see that with a trilobite. We can see that with any of the arthropods that we're taking a look at. So the general body plan will have three parts. You'll have a head, thorax, and abdomen. Now, some of the arthropods kind of tweak it, and they do kind of a two-part body plan. They take the head and the head and the chest have fused together into a thing called the cephalothorax, and then they still have the abdomen. So let me increase that a little bit. All right, but three basic body parts for the members of phylum arthropoda. It's just how do they tweak it? Is it completely three or is it two individual? segments but one's the fused one um, another key feature when we look at arthropods they will have jointed appendages so the appendages can be modified all sorts of different functions and features and adaptations they could use them for feeding Oop, that's supposed to say apparatus. So feeding apparatus, legs, 
DuckTales. I'm just going to go etc. All sorts of different adaptations. This is often how we identify different groups of arthropods as we get really, really specific is we look at their appendages and use that to identify whether they go into this, maybe it's a particular order, classification level of order for the arthropods because of how the legs are jointed. Is it two joints, three joints, etc.? So lots of variation on the jointed appendages. Um, circulatory system. Circulatory system is an open system. So we've talked about this with other groups. And again, which other groups have an open circulatory system? Hmm, who's got that? What pros and cons come with that? Uh, think about the general flow of blood. The heart pumps it out <clears throat> through arteries. It dumps across body tissue, mixes with body fluid called hemolymph, and then it returns back to the heart. So again, I want you guys to think about pros and cons of that open circulatory system. The nervous system. Now we get arthropods that have a nervous system where they have a brain. Typically called the ganglia. It's a collection of neural tissue. It is a concentration or an enlargement of neural tissue that does give them more specialized functions. Um, when we talk about the nervous system, oops. arthropods have some pretty impressive sensory structures. Think about their eyes, their antenna, and again, I'll just put etc their appendages, things like that, that enable them to detect all sorts of different things. So complex nervous system. Okay, other feature. Oop. When we look at the arthropods is the respiratory system. Ah. All right, so the respiratory system, and this is going to vary. Some arthropods use gills, completely aquatic. Other arthropods use book lungs. Okay, these are also aquatic. And then others, like the one we're seeing here with the grasshopper, use these structures called trachea. Ooh, I'm running out of room. I gotta make my grasshopper even smaller. Um, all right, trachea. This is found in terrestrial arthropods. So all sorts of variations. Um, it just depends on, actually, book lungs can be aquatic and oops, terrestrial. Uh, all sorts of adaptations to being able to exchange gases, oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, and the last major feature to mention here is the excretory system in the arthropods. Uh, depends on if you're aquatic, your ex excretory system, the way you're getting rid of waste product is primarily through diffusion of waste product with the um, blood in the gills for getting rid of your waste product. If you're a terrestrial arthropod, then we often see with those guys uh, structures known as malphigian. Tubules. And these are going to excrete wastes out the body. They're used for um, excreting urea and toxins and things like that. All right, so big major features. Um, and then what we're going to do is just a very, very brief overview of four major lineages of arthropods in part two here.